Hello, in this video we'll be showing you the main overview of Bright, the Bright Builder user interface. This video is intended for new users who may have installed Bright Builder for the first time and would like to get familiar with the interface. So this is Bright Builder as it first appears after it's been installed. There are two windows open, the Projects window and the Servers window. The first thing you probably want to do is the first item on the toolbar is New Project. So I click on there and straight away we can see that there are two types of projects that Bright, that Bright Builder can create. The BSP Bright Software Project for Brightforms file is the project that we use for that's the actual PDA application itself. The second type of, of file is the BEP file project which is the server configuration file. So I can create PDA applications using BSP or I can configure the Bright server using the BEP. So I'm going to start with creating a brand new project. As soon as it is created for the first time, it appears in the projects window. When a project is open in Bright Builder, it has a tree structure in the projects window. And these are all the main elements for within a project. And I'm just going to run through them all briefly for you now. A form is a screen in the PDA application. So this is the user interface definition. And the way we use it in Bright Builder is by using a drag and drop style type of environment where I can resize, move, drag, copy, paste the visual elements of the screen. The next type of element in the project are tables. So here we are defining the tables for that will be the database def this, this will be the database as defined as that will be stored on the PDA and the way that the data will be stored in the central database controlled by Bright Server. The next type of element are queries. Queries use the tables definitions that I've just created. Queries are used in Bright Builder to define data sets that we can use to display maybe a set of data on a screen in a list view perhaps or they can be used to define a data set that might, we might want to use to move data from, uh, from place to place. And the way we move data from place to place, like from client to server or from server to client, is using sync rules, which is the next element. The sync rule has a direction, either upload or download, and it uses the query. So I'm going to use the query to define a data set that I might want to upload, or I might want to create a data set to ask the server for a particular refined data set, filtered data set coming down from the server. For example, all of the products with a certain code on them or something like that. The next element in the project are reports. Reports are where we define the physical print layout for a printed document that a handheld printer could produce. So Brightforms supports handheld printers. And the layout for the report printout is very similar drag and drop that we've seen for all, for the forms. The next item in the project tree is languages. This feature can be used to create, to convert your project from being monolingual, which is, so it's English right now. If I go ahead and open the languages editor, I can see all of the all of the string items that are being used for uh, display purposes on the forms and the reports that I've created so far. I can easily add another language that I want to support on the same solution. So a translator can use this window to very rapidly turn this application into a multilingual application. And the final item in the project tree are globals. Globals are simple. This is simply a place where all of the global items f within the project reside. So a global variable, for example, is a variable that can be reached from within any form in the project. And that wraps up all of the main project items in the BSP. So now I'm going to create um, the next type of project. Going back to new project here, and this time I'm going to select the Bright Server project and create a server configuration file or BEP file. Similar to the BSP, the BEP is 
represented in the projects window on a tree. And the elements underneath the BEP are sync points, scripts, mappings and tables. Tables is actually a direct copy from what we actually have up in the BSP project area. And what I can actually do is copy and paste elements from one to the other. Copy and paste is supported throughout Bright Builder in, in almost every area of the developer of the developer environment. So in the server configuration, the BEP file server configuration, really what I'm trying to do is to define the data that the data that the server can can, can support. So the sync points is where I do that. I can drag and drop data sources that these are the data sources the Bright Server will be connecting to to read and write its data to and from the field. So this visual layout tool for the sync point represents my business end data sources here, for example. And these butterfly blue butterflies in the PDA represent data that data objects that are coming from the field. So I just select one of these and map it to a table. And if I if I draw an arrow from the database to out to the field, this is outgoing. This is outbound data. So, for example, this is a list of products being being sent out to the PDAs so that they can um, then have that data on the PDA. And I can also, in the other direction, have another data object and draw the arrows in the opposite direction. So the, this represents data flow from the field into the database and I can have as many databases as I, li as I like I can have files and so on so this gives me inside the server configurations session in Bright Builder a visual tool for laying out data flows the next item in the BEP are scripts scripts are an advanced feature supported by Bright Server which are really used for uh, handling or, uh, advanced data distribution requirements or advanced requirements where data is coming to or from the server. And I'm just going to just quickly demonstrate how that script looks in Bright Server by generating an empty script. And there you have your script editor. Scripts will be covered in, in, in other uh, advanced tutorials. The next item on the list are mappings. Mappings are another advanced feature within Bright Server. And they are particularly used when, for example, the if I go back to the sync point, for a situation where maybe the table, the, the data layout for the for the table in the PDA, for example, and the data layout in the database differ. By that I mean maybe they've got different column names. So the mapping there just handles those those discrepancies. Next I'm going to show you how to run the, the server configuration BEP file in the development environment. If I click the play button, I can run the Bright Server. But first of all, what's happened is it's come up with a valid, some validation errors. And that gives me a chance to tell you about validation. Validation is a very important part of Bright Builder. It stops you from running a particularly incorrect uh, server configuration and points out what the problems are and helps you to solve them. So I'm going to click no to quit the execute. And basically, it's a few of these errors are basically saying that I need to fill out some more details in some of the uh, sync points and the mappings and the tables that I have here and what I can do I can click on these items and that in the validation window the blue ones and they actually take me to the problem so here I've got no primary key in my table I'm going to delete these items so just to show you what just to show you when Bryce server is running because I just want to show you the uh, server window is the final is the final thing uh, of the overview. So I'm going to execute Bright Server. I get an output window that shows me all of Bright Server up and running. So finally, the servers window is where I can connect to the server, and I can look at the system info. Uh, I can see who's online, license users, remote tracing, all of the maintaining and the monitoring and the configuration of the server from here. This will be covered in, in, in later videos in our series, so please come to the brightexpress.com website and check those videos out. And that is the Bright Builder interface.